Welcome to our podcast. You're listening to Spring by Ixon at www.ixonmusic.com. You know, I really gave this some thought. You definitely want to be the ex that that nigga hates. You want to be the ex that he talks trash about to every fucking body. You want to be that bitch. Because all that that means is you was the bitch that he could never control. You was the bitch he tried to break and he failed miserably. You was the bitch that got away. All the others kept going back because they're fucking stupid. You was the bitch that wasn't phased by all the negative shit he had to say about you in the streets. You know, he said your coochie smelled. He said your cooking is terrible. He said your house was dirty. He said you're a terrible mother. He said you're a hoe. He said you're a cheater. He said you're a backstabber. He said you fucked all your coworkers. He said he can't trust you, bitch. He said he's the reason that you're famous and successful. That nigga got so much shit to say about you when he running your name into the dirt in the streets. Because you was smart enough to get the fuck away from him and never look back. Oh, by the way, he also told everybody that he could have you anytime he wanted to. If he whistled, you would come back. No, the fuck you did not go back. So now he looks stupid for telling that motherfucking lie. Because you left his ass two years ago and you ain't looked back. And he is checking and his family is checking and his bitches are checking. You still ain't went back. They all stalking your social media because of him. Because you got him looking like a fucking fool after he told everybody he could have you anytime he fucking want. Dumbass nigga. He hates your ass because he can't control you. He hates your ass because you're not gullible, dumb and weak like all his exes. You're just not that girl that he wants you to be. You're not a weak bitch like his mama. He hates that shit. Let me tell you something. Let him talk all the shit in the world. See, me personally, all my exes, bitch, I be sitting up laughing. I hope they tear my motherfucking name in the ground, bitch. I don't care if the niggas call me crazy, psycho, um, bitter, yada, 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 miserable. Bitch, I got the fuck out. I'm winning. I'm a household name. My name rings bells internationally. I'm known. Celebrities are all in my comments. They follow my content. I'm somebody, bitch. Why would I lower myself or give a fuck about a weak nigga who who couldn't tame me or control me? And he's mad about it. He's supposed to hate you and talk shit about you. You outsmarted him. Be proud of yourself, girl. Wear that shit like a badge. (laughs) Uh, preach okay (laughs) and if you like that video welcome to why complain when you can whine making sense of the senseless three professional women attempting to make sense of toxic nonsense while drinking wine i am dr jody larman licensed clinical psychologist in the state of california therefore anything that we talk about on this podcast is for uh entertainment and psychoeducational purposes only and tonight I am drinking a Cabernet Syrah by Marcel Barbelot. And I looked it up to see, make sure I was pronouncing it correctly. And I still don't think I was, but that's okay. And my glass today, specifically for our guest, I thought long and hard because I had a lot of, lot of <laughs> good ones, but I think this one's good. It says, a wise woman once said, fuck this shit. <laughs> and she lived happily ever after. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so perfect. Um, hi, I'm Heather, licensed professional counselor in Colorado and some domestic violence survivor. I'm not drinking wine again. I'm back on my margarita shit because um, I'm obsessed. It's just that time of year. Um, so that's what I'm drinking again today. Is it my turn? Ashley. I okay. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I gave a disclaimer. I've had two margaritas. <laughs> I am Ashley Page, founder of Loving Single and the Hot Mess Society, domestic violence survivor and single mom. Tonight, don't listen. When I said I had two margaritas, this wasn't 
the three quarters of the bottle that's missing from this. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <judgment. You're> so- <laughs> <laughs> I drink this is a bottle I got at um Sam's Club for 10 bucks legitimately. Um it's a margarita wine cocktail. So I did stay with the theme and also with the margarita. And tonight I'm just drinking out of this pretty I love that one. I love this yeah. glass. It's so nice. It's dark. Mm-hmm. And our special <laughs> guest is spiritual whistleblower hi everybody um my name is chanel chanel clark known as the spiritual whistleblower i'm a life coach and a victim advocate and an author and definitely a dv survivor and tonight i'm doing the college girl thing uh with a mixed concoction in my red cup I've had an exhausting the last 48 hours and I, I can't wait to tell Doc about it. And maybe it's another subject you guys can talk about in the future. But I I had to keep it red cup tonight. I was gonna do a wine glass. I said no, keep it in the red cup. So I I love I fucking love the red cup. In fact, I was like, man, wouldn't that be cool if they had like a porcelain red cup? Yeah. Ooh, like- <laughs> That you never had to work away. And from what I understand, the red solo cup is like an American thing too. Because whenever I yes. think about, is this really true that people drink out of these things? It's like, yeah, you mean people don't. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of red solo cups over <laughs> in my storage right there. Yeah, it's it's yes. not a party without a red solo cup. That's right. Yeah. And beer pong or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. We're so happy to have you here. We are wow. so Thank you. excited to have you here. Wow. Thank so you. There's so much we can talk about. There are, that video is fire. And, <laughs> and, and honestly, what I love is I was looking at all the titles of your books I and I love them. the titles of your books. Just the titles alone. Uh, it's like, I don't even have to read what's inside. I just want to frame the titles of the books <laughs> alone. Um, and I can say them off unless you want to say some of them. No, the honor is the go for it, doc. Uh, no, this is great. You do it. <laughs> okay. So I, I actually, know. cause I had the video, so please excuse me. Cause I have to find those. Cause I had that, but then I, you know, then I put these up. So let me find the, okay. Um, whoops. That's not the one. There it is. Go to hell, Jezebel, Um, (laughs) a male guide to identifying a female narcissist. Uh, This, I think, though, is one of my favorite titles. Um, I can't stand, I'm sorry, I can't stand my mother and other messy bitches in my family. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And my family can kiss my ass. Oh yeah, oh yeah. (laughs) I just like the titles. I mean, (laughs) those are the best titles if I was looking for um let's see mother mother made you mother fuck you (laughs) identifying and avoiding toxic men with mommy issues Um, yes (laughs) I need to get that book right now (laughs) I just I just love the names of the books so tell us a little bit for everybody that doesn't know you it ha- you because you have a, a shit ton of followers excuse me not excuse me why excuse me we all cuss um on tiktok so let's hear a little bit from you about you um it's it's crazy doc because i never got in this to get followers or you know this wasn't like um it started with me on YouTube five years ago, just doing video blogs and just talking about the abuse I endured, um, sitting in a dark room, doing nothing but audio videos. And for some reason, people wanted to hear more. And I'm like, why? You know, this is for me. I'm just documenting the things I've gone through. And uh, my following just started growing because people, I guess I, I was just blunt and raw in my videos and people wanted to hear more and they liked the curse. And I'm like, huh, are you serious? So it started by my, my original name was Kill Jezebel because you know who Jezebel was in the Bible. And I feel like that spirit is the spirit that's 
inside of men today. I don't care what race of man, but they get that nasty feminine spirit from their toxic mothers and they punish us. You know, um, the amazing thing about TikTok, um, you know, cause I'm a black woman and you know, black women are getting hip to narc abuse and they're coming together in the community, but TikTok has like brought all races of women together and we're all comparing notes and, and sticking together. So, um, my phone just started growing and then, you know, the demand started growing and I said, okay, people like my realness. I feel like I can be me. I never got my whole life. I was bullied and laughed at, you know, I'm a big girl, you know, you're fat. My, you know, my family picked at me and I was just always silenced. I never had a voice. So for once in my life, I could be me. And my audience accepted that and loved that. And the demand just grew. And um, here I am today. So I, you know, I just talk about, you know, I've been married to a narc. I've co-parented with a fucking psychopath. Um, survived that. Both of my parents are narcs. Both sides of my family are insane. I just can't even, I cut both sides of my family off 15 years ago. So I just basically talk about everything including my toxic toxicity, because there's no way you can be raised in that system and not pick up toxic shit. So we all have to clean our own messes up. So I'm just real with people. And, and that's how I got here today. And my following grew just I, I, people like the realness and the cursing. I don't, I don't know. I, my, my shit ends up on celebrity. The uh, one talk show, the real they just took one of my damn videos. They didn't tag me. My, you know, supporters said, hey, your shit is on a talk show. I said, what talk show? What are you talking about? They took it and they, they're, they're doing a roundtable discussion on it. So I'm, I'm just grateful that, you know, I can be myself and be respected for it. I'm just talking about everything I went through in life. That's all it is. That's it. Ashley, you have said the same thing about being taught, getting toxic tra gaining toxic traits when yeah. you're in a toxic relationship you've mm -hmm. talked about that too ashley yeah. yeah it's it's a the longer you especially um i know for me with domestic violence it was i had to develop that as a coping skill and as a form of protection in order to survive the abuse mm -hmm. and then once once we leave then then that's the behavior, at least in myself, that came out onto others mm -hmm. because of the isolation and because I wasn't used to being around people all the time. Honestly, it was, I was used to being around him. And then I was used to being locked inside closets or the house or my car. And so when, when he was gone, I, I, all that toxic behavior came out. That's totally. what, when you leave a relationship, when you grow up from a family or you leave a relationship, that's when you see the real damage that's been done because you don't see it when you're in it. I mean, you see a little bit of it and you know, it's toxic and you, you see what's going on, but when you leave that relationship, that's when the, uh -huh. it just, it's like looking back and going, Oh, fuck. Yeah. I didn't I even know. recognize myself when it was over. It's like, who is this? And, and yeah. how the fuck did I, did I go through that? Like, because yeah. if somebody would say to you, this is what you're going to go through in your life. You're going to be like, yeah, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And then you look back and go, holy fuck. Yeah. I did do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there's dealing with that as well. And that's why I, I think a lot of people do start to tell their story partly because you're telling it to yourself. You're kind of saying, this is what I went through. So it is okay for me to process. That's the processing of it all. Mm -hmm. And it's very cathartic, but it's also like, I know with myself and hearing it and seeing it and going, okay, so I'm not an idiot. Right. I'm not stupid. <clears throat> And in telling this and hearing other people saying, oh my God, I went through this or that or the other, it's very cl it cleansing, I would say in a way. Yeah. And it does help. It did help me 
to get beyond also what, because as a psychologist, I went through the whole, what the fuck is wrong with me? What as a psychologist, I went through, I'm an idiot. I went through, I had to go to therapy because I'm like, I'm not a good psychologist. How can I also I? had no. imposter syndrome for about six months. I was like, how is a therapist getting wrapped up in this shit? I should, and I work in criminal justice too. So I like mm -hmm. my clients are, a lot of them have serious mental illness and have personality disorders and mm -hmm. um, cluster B personality disorders. So I was like, how did I let this total sociopath snow me? And I think what I love most about the, like the swearing in your content and like just the rawness of it is I feel like that's exactly what people feel is that just like, like there's some, like, there's a lot of angst about it. <laughs> and when uh -huh. you, just need it, you just need to talk a bunch of shit and that will help you feel better and swear as much as you want. And, and it's the, the rawness and the angst of it is what I think people really relate to because it's, we carry that around with us a lot as yeah. triggers, just this, there's kind of an angst and an anger about us always. And that yeah. outlet of just being able to be like, fuck that motherfucker here and there, like <laughs> feels really good to people. Um, so I think you just give so much of a voice to survivors. Well, that's the thing too. Um, I think as a survivor, and I've had many people come up to me and say, you know, I'm quiet and shy, but you know, listen to your videos. It's like, you're speaking on my behalf because you say the shit that I really want to say to the narcissist. And I tell them too, I said, my entire life, I was that quiet, shy girl in the corner. I was constantly silenced and bullied and never could speak up for myself. And that shit built up over the years. And this is what you see today. It's just a years and years of buildup of taking shit off of narcs. And I'm at the point of like, fuck it. Whoever don't like my mouth can go to fucking hell because I'm sick of all of them. I'm going to tell it <laughs> like it is. And I'm going to say it in my language and because I'm sick of it. This, the, this abuse is so demonic and mm -hmm. so many of them get away with it. Like, and then they, they, they gaslight you into saying, well, who hurts you? You're bitter. You gotta, I don't give a fuck what you think about me. <laughs> I'm going to expose the shit out of you, whether you like your trigger because you're mad. I'm telling all your fucking secrets and your manipulation tactics. So this is years, decades of built up being silenced and bullied. So I tell everybody, tell your fucking story. If you got to cuss, cuss. And no, Doc, it doesn't make you uh, uh, crazier. I would rather trust a professional that's gone through this shit and beat it and survived it than one that's been credentialed and hasn't gone through anything. They're just telling you, you know, what they think. I want a, I want a therapist that's gone through this shit that can identify and they know it inside and out. You know, I trust them more. So no, no, there's nothing crazy about a professional going through it. And, you know, so a lot of them are abusive in their sessions too. We don't talk about that dark side of psychology either. Yeah. Uh, that's what I, the people on it's the one thing I know when I started watching your videos, I was like, damn, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, you do, I, I used to teach, I used to guest lecture at community college. I taught in grad school and I taught at the prison or facilitated the prison. And I would always say, look, I'm professional. I'm a doctor, I'm a female, but I cuss. Is that a problem? And people would be like, no, 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 I'm like, good. Cause I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> and I said, and sometimes we do, we need a really good fuck is the only word that really gets it out. Like I know people that go, even in the prison, oh, F word. <laughs> no say that, is say that word. <laughs> well but but also here's the other point too like I noticed with myself is that I was and I can relate Chanel to you like I've always I've had struggled with an eating disorder since I was a child I've old I've never been 
I was small once when I be- competed in a bikini competition, but I've always been overweight. My heaviest, I was like, I was always the chubby. That's how, what they call me. The pretty fat girl was what I was mm-hmm. called when I was a little kid. And I was super shy, super insecure. I had no voice. I was molested. And then when mm-hmm. I, after I went through the abuse, they silence you for so long that when you come out of the abuse, you have so many things that you've buried and so many thoughts and so many feelings and like so much emotion. And then what it's taken you to get out of the relationship. All of the only words I have for that are four letter fucking words to express myself And Mm -hmm. like it bubbles and oozes over. And I feel like too many people are trying to be like eloquent and like professional, especially like in creating content. And that's something I really feel like has garnered you as much attention and notoriety and like success as it has, because it's, it's real. Like that's really what we're fucking feeling is fuck you motherfucker. And like, fuck you for saying this shit about me and fuck you for it's, it's either that or I'm going to jail because I'm gonna blow your head off it's either <laughs> I, I, mean, I have to say it my way or else I'm gonna fucking hurt somebody yes I'm going to black out reactive abuse I'm going to hurt <laughs> somebody if I don't fucking vent the way that I want to vent this is what's keeping me sane and out of trouble my mouth <laughs> that's, amen to that that's it that's it that. same yeah. when I see people on TikTok the one thing I cannot stand is are people that are like why are you demonizing NPD oh fuck. well first off it, you obviously you never met <laughs> or been in any kind of relationship with someone with NPD because they are the fucking lowest of low and evilest of evil and they will stop at nothing to harm you it's Mm -hmm. demon behavior it's demon behavior that's why it's demonized oh they're triggered doc whoever said that to you is a fucking narc that's what what i said i have people i had someone recently that i said they're like cluster bees aren't all like that i said and and um personality disorders aren't all abusive and i said okay first off Stop saying personality disorders. We're talking NPD. There are 10 personality disorders, one NPD. And then this person comes in and said, I guess they looked at my link tree and they're like, ooh, you have an Amazon wish list. Ooh, you're peddling merchandise. I'm like, what? I've not done any of that. And so obviously these people who say that they're not abusive and on and on, but then come back at you and they're like, you know, I could go to the board and say you're endorsing products. That's how Dr. Oz got in trouble. I just don't respond, but I'm like, what the fuck product am I endorsing? Because I'm not getting any money for anything. But I'm like, you people are saying you're not abusive. Abusive behavior doesn't necessarily mean physical abuse, dumbass. Right. right. Being a fucking asshole is abusive. And I just have to say, because I know when this gets posted, it's not going to be this way probably, but in my screen, Heather, you're below Ashley and you just looked up and it was such a Brady Bunch moment. (laughs) I expected (laughs) Ashley to look down. It was like perfectly aligned. And it's probably not going to show like that when it posts. But I was just like, damn, Brady Bunch flashbacks right there. I really thought... Ashley was going to look down and that would have just been like, perfect. Sorry, I get distracted. Um, I don't feel like you're bitter though. Like the whole like, and you're bitter and you're mad. Like I get really like, that really jams my Glock because I, I don't feel like we're like bitter old ladies for swearing, being real, being angry sometimes who hurt you oh it's projection they're mad that we're exposing them so they 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 try to silence and i said oh i'm a bitter bitch i'm i'm you're you're damn right i'm bitter now what you gonna do to shut my mouth that's how i talk to them i throw it right back in their face and who hurt you the motherfucking narcissist that i'm talking about that's who hurt me and that's why i'm talking about it yeah (laughs) yep Exactly. 
I just don't feel bitter at all when I'm when I like I don't feel I don't know what that means I guess like when they say that I'm like no I'm just I just I'm smarter now and you're mad about it that's all or you can say like I would like the men really are mad at me and they say who hurt you and I said who hurt your mama? Was it your daddy when he cheated on her? I, you know, I say all. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so who hurt your fucking mama? Who hurt your sister? Was it her lousy boyfriend? Her baby daddy? Woo! Let's talk about the women in your family. Oh, they be they be so mad. I throw it back at them. I love that. <laughs> well, I yeah. so I'm 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 probably hanging on, but you mentioned something when you introduced yourself. Mm-hmm. about something you wanted to talk about and I don't want to miss that okay so what's the scoop on <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said you, you were no no I'm talking to you Chan- Chanel because um you had mentioned when you introduced yourself there was a topic you wanted to talk about oh Cody I want to I want to know what it is <laughs> okay so so doc deals with the prison stuff but I you know um Doc's a mom and I'm a mom. Are you are you ladies' mothers? I am okay. not. I am. You're, okay. So within the last 48 hours, I dealt with some next level narc abuse, but in a corporate setting. And as a mother, I, I'm gonna do videos on this in the future because I didn't even know it existed. But my I have a young adult, she's 22, but she's special, you know, she's um she has mental illness and I had to put her in inpatient rehab in Florida. And um she was there for five months and I had to take an emergency. I'm I'm sitting here tired because the last 48 hours have been taxing on me. I flew down there to to have I had to go get her out, but I had to sneak and get her out because. Um, they call it patient brokering, where it's it's like human trafficking, but it's legalized. All the rehabs and sober living situations, they all work together to recycle young adults in these programs just to bleed out the parents' health insurance. It's the most sickest, disgusting, um, and some young adults end up overdosing and dying. They don't communicate with the parents back home. They drive away, they triangulate and try to break up the families. And then they step in and they groom the young adults to stay in Florida. And and then they get back on drugs and they get back. It's like they recycle back into inpatient. So they tried to do that with my daughter. And I flew down there and I was at the police station. They they, uh, put her in a halfway house without telling me the name and everything. Like it was a nightmare. I had to hunt her down um threaten them it's a long story but i'm going to do a complete story time video i want to warn parents about this and i was going toe to toe with the ceo he was a psychopath times 10 like he strung me along and stuff he didn't want me to see my daughter or take her out of florida because my health insurance was so excellent they wanted to continue billing me for her services but they stuck her in a halfway house and they were going to make her pay $1,200 a month to stay in this halfway house that I didn't approve of while billing her for outpatient therapy while she stayed in this halfway house. It's disgusting. So it's and a this was all voluntary. This was all voluntary, right? And yeah. did yeah. they take her to court to try to get conservator or try to get no. her involuntary? Because no. no. that's sometimes what they do too, is they'll go to court and they'll get them involuntary without them even knowing. They did Baker Act her back in January, and that was difficult. In Florida, they can put you in the psychiatric, in the in the hospital, and I had a time with that. So it taught me many lessons. Like I'm going to get my legal stuff together, you know, power of attorney, legal guardianship. But I got to warn parents because you have, even though you have a young adult, and you, I've always been primary caretaker you know, of my baby and she's all I have. It's just me and her always been, you know, you, as a parent, you think you're sending your kid off to a, a Florida, the weather's beautiful. They're in a different environment everything. They, they sell it so good to you. Oh, bring your kid down here. It's going to be wonderful. They're, we're going to do beach activities. Da, 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 da. But 
it's narc. They, they do the whole devalue, love bomb, devalue, all that. They groom your child and they kind of step in and do this pseudo parenting and divide the family up. And they, they, they constantly, they're, they're, they're uh, billing you for different things. They put my daughter on all these medications. I was like, she's like on seven meds. No, that's not right. She said, my daughter said they put her on a lot of sleeping medication. She's never been on sleeping medication. They put her on birth control. They put her on this, they put her on that. No, um, it's just so much. They were trying to pimp her as well in the halfway house. And she said, mommy, I was in there with felons. They told me they would give me my medicine every day. They didn't give me my medicine. They just want me to work. And so the people that run the sober living, they're ex addicts and stuff. So they're still getting high. That's why they're pressuring her for money. And um, I said, wow, I'm going to blow this thing up. I got to inform parents, you know, if you're going to put your kids in rehab, you better make sure legally you're in control of everything and um, put stuff in, in contracts so that they can't make decisions or transfer your child. You know, NBC and ABC did a whole investigation because a lot of kids go down there and they overdose and they die and their parents have to go pick their bodies up. So I'm going to, you know, do start exposing it. They call it patient brokering. Did it's they take really, her phone away and not allow her? They, to they took her phone away. She said, mom, they tried to get me to block you. Me and my daughter almost had a falling out because they, they, it's weird. It's like they triangulated me against her and her against me to keep us separated. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. Do I have to cut her from my insurance? Because I don't want to because I see now what's going on. And they're like, no, don't cut her insurance. I said, well, you, she can't stay down there. Well, she goes back home. She's going to relapse. I said, she can relapse down there. What are you talking about? You know, why would you groom her to not want to come back home to me? So I, once I saw what was going on, I said, oh, no, no, I've got to put this word out. So, yeah, I knew the signs that the, the CEO, he was totally his whole staff. His name is Ben Brathman of the Sylvia Brathman Mental Health Facility in Fort Lauderdale. And the whole facility is private run, but the whole staff, he has everybody. They're his flying monkeys and they're doing his dirty work and they recruit young people into the program and they just groom them. And the parents are long distance. They have no idea this is going on. It's sick. It's the sickest thing. It's like human trafficking. They just found a way to legalize it. And it's really hard because she's over 18. Right, so right. They can throw that where when you're over 18, the minute your 18th birthday, the minute you turn 18, you're no longer able to be their advocate unless right. you have a court order to do that. But right. you're no longer their advocate. And, but yet you're still responsible financially. But Oh, they had my credit card on file and they was billing up my health insurance, something. So, yeah, my health insurance will pay for anything. Like I have the type, like it's really, really good. So they, they, they said down there, kids like her are referred to as liquid gold when they have good insurance policies. And um, it's, it's the sickest thing I've ever seen. I said, oh no, I've got to expose this stuff. This is some dirty stuff. And they, they kept saying, well, she's an adult now. She chose the halfway house. I said, no, you guys manipulated her behind my back. My baby's very sweet, very gullible. She, she's a borderline. She has BPD too. And she has like the, you know, she gets attached to people. She has that codependency thing that I'm constantly working with her to break. So she doesn't know any better. And she said, mommy, they told me I need to focus on recovery. I'll be better off down here. I said, no, baby, they're manipulating you. So it was just a nightmare to, to um, but I got her. I, I got a police escort and got her out the halfway house and flew her back. So um, I almost missed my appointment with you guys. I didn't want to miss it with you guys, but that was my last 48 hours. It was exhausting. And I mean, narc abuse on the next level because um, the head of the company, he is basically puppet mastering everything and everybody and they're all working together to scam the parents out of money. And they use your kid as a pawn to do it. Yeah. Ashley, you looked like you were going to say something. No, I'm just disgusted. I do yeah. have a lot of things I'd like to say. And unfortunately, I can't. 
Okay. <laughs> well, we 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 have our own. Oh, okay. Things, but that um, that you know, I've heard a lot about um, with with children, different types of legal trafficking that they have, um, yeah. in the part, especially in the United States, and it's it's shocking. It's absolutely appalling. It's disgusting. Um what what is happening and i can't i know like it sounds like you you know i have a daughter and she's 8 and i just i can't i can't imagine what this has been like for you well thank goodness like they didn't know that i was a spiritual whistleblower and um i had to like the ceo my daughter signed a release of information so they're supposed to turn over whatever info i request you know and i said I said, who's the halfway house? Uh, the halfway house is Roots to Recovery in Delray Beach. I said, what is the address? The CEO gave me, he deliberately gave me a false address. I went there and the police said, there's no such address. And we can't tell you. Um, so I had to go to social media and call on the help of my followers. I said, who lives in Delray? Tell me where this place is. And my followers came through. They gave me, they produced the address like in five minutes. And I went there and yeah, so I got a police escort and they got my baby and her things out of there. And the manager of the sober house where she was, the halfway house where she was staying, they, they changed in front of her. They were like, give us our money. You owe us rent money. She was only there for a week. And she said, huh, you guys told me I was here on scholarship for my first month. Now you're asking me for money. Yeah, they were so angry that she was leaving they started, you know, where's our money? We want our money. So I said, baby, you see their true colors. This is all about money. And she, she broke down and cried. So and you said I got they put her on seven meds. She was on. Yeah, seven I got it. I'm going to give you the list doc of what I got to go through all this just to like, we're, we're just decompressing today. I'll give you a list. When she went in, she was doing the shot. She was doing the shot, um, the Abilify, I think every other, and, and that was fine. And they called me like, I'm like, why is she on these meds? What is, what is she on? And she said, mommy, they put me on anxiety and then my period's messed up. So they put me on birth control and they put me on sleep meds because my anxiety. And I said, no, um, sounds like they're drugging her up or something. I don't know. Something's off. As a mother, my intuition, you know, was bothering me. So you know, I worked in an inpatient hospital for just six months. It was when I was getting my master's and I hated it. It mm -hmm. was, there were two of us there. We were the only psychology people there. Otherwise it was psychiatrists and doctors and it was a psych hospital. And so when we went and saw the patients, they were like, oh my God, all I need is to talk to someone. I just want to talk to someone. I haven't been able to talk to someone and they're giving me meds and that's all they do is give meds. And then we yeah. would sit the round tables every day and what they would do is, okay, how much time does so-and-so have left on their insurance? We got to discharge them and then they'll be back in 72 hours and then it starts over again. Yeah. And they would do this just like they would do this with all the patients and it was like, Oh my God. Yeah. That, that made me like, you know, never want to work in an inpatient. I did work in a skilled nursing facility uh -huh. and they would add psych med on top of psych med, on top of psych med, on top of regular med, on top of psych med until people were so psych med at medication coma, pretty much a medication stupor. Yeah. And then they would tell their families, like I had a lady who um, she ran out at, in the middle of the night naked in the street. And so they brought her back and I was there in the morning. They're talking to the family and they're like, we're going to add such and such med. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm looking at her chart. And I called the family over when it was all done. I said, she's on like eight meds now. Cause all they're doing is adding meds Maybe yeah. talk to them and get those meds taken down so that she's not on so many meds. Cause that can be the problem. But yeah. what happens is they get you, the family, whether it is a minor or uh, someone with mental illness that's of age or a, a um, senior, and they get them so vulnerable. Yes. 
So that yeah. even if they said to you, you know what, this really is the best thing for you. And you're like, okay, because you trust them because right. they're doctors, because they know better. And it's like, no, they fucking don't. Now, this is not everybody. This is not a blanket statement. There are some facilities that are great and wonderful and do wonderful things. But I have seen it way too many times being taken advantage of, especially with mental illness, especially with mental illness. Yeah. Let's just give you a bunch of medication till you're in a stupor, that old Thorazine shuffle. And then say that we did this or say that we told you that or say that we promised you this, but really we don't, we didn't. And then yeah. when the family, they, they, again, they do, they triangulate because then when the family tries to get involved, no, 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 no. This is what's best. And she yeah. agreed or he agreed. Yeah. And they don't know what they agreed to because they're not, they're not idiots, but they're not of their right mind to make those decisions. And they're over 18 and they'll say, well, they're over 18 and this is what they chose and you can't. So they play this game with the parents. So I got it now. I'm going to put the education out there. I got, I, I just want to warn parents because your kid can get it. They call it the South Florida shuffle and it's a billion dollar business down there. And I'm, um, some kids don't make it back home. Like there was a lady from South Dakota that lost her daughter. She had been passed around to 15 different centers before she overdosed. And her mom had over $600,000 in bills from health insurance. Like they tore her insurance up. So I said, oh no, you're not gonna do me like that. I went down there and got my daughter. I had to pop up on them and surprise them. So yeah. And you know, I... <laughs> I think she's really lucky in this sense. This is not, this is not good on you, but good that you know, cause you're like, oh, don't fucking gaslight me. Yeah. I have been gaslit. You're gaslighting the wrong person. If you get someone that's never been or has no idea, <laughs> then they kind of go along with it. But it's like, oh no, no, no motherfucker. No. I've been gaslit. I know what it looks like. Yeah. Do yeah. Oh no, I gave them hell and I will be um, reporting them to every agency. My daughter will too, because she said she has bipolar, you know, she's on SSI. They were getting ready to mess up her SSI. I said, if you stay down there and you start working, you know, that's going to tamper with all types of stuff here legally. So she realizes now like, oh my God, mommy, I didn't, I didn't see it. I see it now. So she's home. She's good. And, um, it's just, it's scary, but they, they don't care that you, your kid is just money. It's just money to them. They just, that's all they care about. And she wasn't taken care of, you know, um, she begged them to take her to the beauty shop. You know, her, you know, she loves to do makeup and hair and stuff. And her, that was part of her self-esteem. They would not take her. They took the boys to the barber shop, but they wouldn't take the girls and rehab they, their hair and nails done. It affected her. So I had to fly down sometimes and take her to get the whole beauty treatment, take her shopping. I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing down here in this rehab? You know, so. Did they have the, the males and females together? Um, they separated them just, but like when they took them out on activities and stuff, they, they blended. But no, the girls had the separate house. I believe. Yeah. So <laughs> nightmarish. So I almost didn't make it tonight because I, I mean, I was holding on by a thread. I wanted to dress up and get my wine bottle out, but I said, I, I'm holding on, you know, I'll probably do more of these with you guys in the future. And um, I was just going to say, we are super, super glad and excited you're here and you yeah. are welcome to come back. And yeah when you can get your sure. wine out and all that yeah just yeah you're welcome here right ladies yeah. hell yeah <laughs> how many margaritas have you had now i, I couldn't I, I couldn't my my mouse pad wasn't pressing the unmute button so i was like waiting I was, to I was, an unmute issue oh us 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I've so. worked in community mental health for the last 10 years and like access to mental health care has been an issue. And then the inpatient hospital, the inpatient hospital system has always been its own kind of special animal to try and deal with. And I, I, I really, really um, hate that you had this experience and that she had this experience because like Jody said, there are so many places out there that are actually doing good work and are helpful to people mm -hmm. um, and, and saving people's lives. And I just, um, it just breaks my heart when I hear stories about systems that break down like that and are just totally corrupt and disgusting and make, um, and make the mental health world look bad because yeah. so many of us out here that, that want to do good work and help and actually help people and not just over medicate and filter them through and recycle them through this like revolving door system. Um, but I mean, we see it happen. Sometimes it's hard to avoid even as staff, as people working in these systems, it's hard to avoid. And I just really, really, really feel for you on that. Um, yeah. Your daughter. I'm so glad that she's home and that she's safe and that she's okay. And I, Hope that you oh, I turned up. You know, the narc, the narc basher and me came out. I was like, I'm gonna <laughs> fuck, I'm gonna fuck one of you motherfuckers up. You, you got, you got the right one, honey. Because I slay, <laughs> I slay narcs in my sleep. Who the fuck I gotta beat up down here? So I was, I was ready for war. Like Good I knew you. what I was dealing with. I knew the signs and the behaviors. It was all textbook. And I'm like, yo, they're triangulating me against my own kid. Yeah. And, yo, yeah. how sick. So it's disgusting. It's so bad. And I hope you find resources for her that work out better. Oh yeah. She's back home. And, um, um, you know, we're going to do the IOP up here and EM I'm an EMDR now, you know, I wanted to try it and I really like it and I'm working it really good. So I'm going to put her in EMDR and, um, you know, if she needs to go back inpatient. She's going to be up here, but this time I'm going to have the legal stuff really in place. So nobody can make no moves unless I approve anything, but I'm just going to, I, you know, you got to go through this stuff to learn how it works. And I'm kind of grateful it did happen because now I'm going to teach parents because what I'm learning, like this generation of young people, the majority of them have all types of stuff. If it's not autism, it's ADHD, it's, it's bipolar, like this generation, you know, it's tough, man. You know, like all my daughter's friends have something and their parents are struggling with it. So we, we you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, it's just another level of stuff to put out there, you know, of, of narc abuse and how manipulative and deceptive men, <laughs> they put me on a call, you know, before I got my daughter, I was down there. I popped up down there and we did like a 3 p.m. call. So I want to speak to my fucking daughter now, get her on the phone now. I was talking to them like that. And it was four men. One of them was her therapist. I said, why does it take four goddamn men to go up against me? Why, why is four of y'all on the fucking phone call? I was cussing their asses out. And I said, I said, I told my daughter, I said, where are you at right now? Give me an address. Mom's going to get you. And um, I met with her and, and I discharged her. But they had groomed her so bad on the call. She was like, Mom, they said I'm going to relapse if I go home. And I really need to stay here and work my program. I said, baby, you've been here five months. Rehab is temporary. It's a mindset. You can relapse anywhere or you can work, you know, take what you learn and go home and start over. You and know? IOP actually has a lot more success than inpatient programs do anyway. So Yeah. And she said that, you know, she, they, it was intensive. She was in, in there every day, eight to 10 hours a day around a groups of people just listening to sob stories and she got tired of it, you know, it was a lot. So now she's home decompressing and, um, you know, mom's got it from here, but I, I wasn't, I was going to kick all their asses. I went down there ready <laughs> to fight. Like, yes, yeah, so you got the wrong one, but it's called the South Florida shuffle that there's a name for it. And it's called patient brokering. It's just legalized human trafficking wow. and they, they destroy families the way that they have it set up. It's really sick. 
So that's my story. That's where I was the last 48 hours. <laughs> well, we have very yeah. appreciate you sharing that too. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to give you a list the next time, Doc, I'll give you the list of, of meds they put her on. I'm going to just get the whole list. I'll inbox you. But um, I'm, yeah. as a mother, I'm like, what the fuck? No, too, too much, too much on her. So, mm -hmm. but um, the, the, the narc stuff overall, I've been celibate for four fucking years. I don't even want to look at a man. I don't <laughs> need a man. I enjoy, I take myself out on dates. I do my own self-care videos. I love being by myself. What do you need a fucking man for other than sex at this point? And do you even want to do that? They're not even good to sex either. So I'm Amen. like, it's, it's like, I, I'm, I, I, what's, the, what's the point? I was reading something today about people that retire. I was reading about cognitive ability in people that retire. I'm semi-retired. I'm medically retired from the prison, but I still do yeah. private practice. But they were saying that these are the things that can help stimulate your cognitive you know, from cognitive decline. And one of the things was regular sex. And I'm looking at it going, hmm. well, I was my cognitive abilities because it's so far, you know, but they said, Does however, it have to be with another person? No, hey, that's what I was going to say. say. <laughs> <laughs> it can also be masturbation. It doesn't have to be with another person. Okay. Right, right. <sighs> Thank God, it, it, my, my yeah. cognitive decline is not on the horizon. <laughs> yeah. One thing, <laughs> one thing that I like about Doc that because I was scared to say this out for so long and now I'm starting to see more people think like I do. I can't fucking stand these these self-aware narcs. Oh. Oh when she said it, when she said it in one of her videos, I said, oh shit, I'm not the only one. I call bullshit. You're gonna sit there like you care about the community. You're educating. No, you're getting narc supply from your fuck from these people. You're manipulating your audience to stroke your own fucking ego. You don't give two shits. And you're probably profiting yeah. off of people too and their pain. Absolutely. I hate self-aware narcs. It's it's fucking toxic, delusional bullshit. And yeah. I get triggered. I get triggered. Why I don't watch them. I do, I block them. You don't either. We right? had a whole podcast about <laughs> yeah. them. I hate we that shit. With you on that. Because are you are you aware that two very popular self-aware narcissists are also self-diagnosed as narcissist well is they sam back in one because i don't listen to sam back and there's what h hd tutor there's lee hammock who's full of fucking lee shit hammock i can't decided stand. that he was npd and then went to therapy and told them he was npd and now he's a self-aware npd he is the one i think that coined him and that other guy that you were telling me heather what is his name there's one other person that you said. Um, ben. Leon Walker. Ben. Ben. What the hell is his last name? Ben. I know who you're talking about, though. Richard mental, Brandon. Men, mental healness, I think, is. That's his. Lee. No, that's Lee. Lee. That's Lee. Oh, okay. Hold on. Ra, I'll look him up right now. Yeah. Find Ra, Ra, both, Ra motivations? No. Yeah. Yeah. Name? Yeah. They both have the same backstory. Someone said they were narcissists. So they looked it up and said, oh, I'm a narcissist. I have NPD. So they went to therapy and became a self-aware NPD. No, motherfucker. You are not NPD. You are egocentric, full of yourself, narcissist in that way. You are an <laughs> asshole is what you are. And you're utilizing you're gonna NPD. Make money. You're utilizing NPD in order to justify your shitty, toxic, abusive, manipulative, cheating behavior. And so it's easier for you to fucking say, I have NPD, I'm a self-aware narcissist, than for me to say I'm a fucking asshole. Mm -hmm. And, and allegedly with Lee, I've heard several stories that he's abusive towards his wife. So that's developing as well. Surprise, but, surprise. but I'm self-aware enough to know and to tell you guys that look at my wife is right here and she's taking it. So all the things I'm telling you, they do work while his wife is sitting there like uh -huh. scared, scared yeah. to talk. 
But that's the thing is they're like, I'm, but I'm NPD. So what do you expect from me? It's there. It's that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's a fucking justification for them. to. It's frustrating to watch and listen to. I hate it. It boils my blood. Oh, (laughs) you hit when you're getting triggered. That's like a fucking nerve. I, when I first heard of self-aware narcissism, I'm like, okay, the definition of self-aware is that, you know, what you are doing. And they're not even narcissists. True NPD aren't even capable of that kind of introspection. Right. Anyway. However, so like, however, let's just say they were. Let's just throw let's that pretend. Out. Let's, let's live are. in let's delusion pretend. land with them for a minute. Yeah. Let's just pretend. <laughs> but what you're basically saying is, I am very aware that I am a fucking piece of shit that's going to abuse you. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm doing is announcing that I am aware that I am abusing you. So I'm giving you fair warning Uh, that I'm telling you that I know that I'm a fucking piece of shit. It's like diagnosed sociopath. (laughs) Have you seen her? Yeah, sociopath, psychopath. That's what that is. And it diagnosed sociopath. Yeah. Her eyes, and she does her eyes all crazy, and she's like, diagnosed. (laughs) 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 To me, Whenever I see people on TikTok saying that they are NPD, first off, you're 15 years old. You're not NPD. There are so many teenagers. And it's like, no, you're not. Now, some of them said that they were diagnosed in a mental hospital. So I do know that psych hospitals, they don't spend time. They're not really accurate on their diagnoses. And they probably just right. say a fucking little teenage attitude NPD whatever but that's horrible they'll be like 18 to 19 the worst hospital if you're doing that I hear I I see it all the time though now but I hear these people that are like I'm NPD I'm NPD and on their bio it'll be NPD, BPD, ASPD, Custer B. Because it's a trend. It's hip. Yeah. Well, it's, that's it's not about the. No. And I even like when I like, I just, when I think about it, like, so my ex has BPD and ASPD. So he's very. Mm. Mm. But yeah. here's the thing if we know NPD, I just have to say this because, you know, I always come with the logic card my straw any npd what is the like one is the most important thing they care about their image their reputation their presentation of themselves of perfection higher Mm -hmm. stature so what npd do you know that's going to come out to the world and say i have a fucking weakness and it's npd no fucking not a single one (laughs) I I told my ex, I told my ex at the very end, I said, you know, I always thought you were Asperger's still could be, but now I know that you're NPD full on textbook, meet all the criteria. And he goes, okay. So what does that mean? Yeah, they don't care. He didn't go, I'm going to get on social media and I'm going to say I'm NPD. It was like, I don't give a fuck. It's either that or they're like, no, you are. You're right, fan. right, right. Well, then, yeah, then you're the one that's crazy or the narcissist. But if you tell them they're NPD, they're like, and? Mm-hmm. Yep. No, because nothing is their fault. So why would they get up there on, on a stage, on a podium, and, announce, and no. announce that what they're doing is fucking wrong when their only recourse is to be like, it's your fucking fault. You did this. Mm-hmm. Like, I abuse you. They're because not celebrating you. their NPD. Yeah. And or, I don't know anyone. Uh oh, somebody froze. Was it me? Probably. No. Did you say probably? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I- you said probably. Um, I, I have never met someone with NPD that said, Hi, I'm so and so. I'm NPD. Never. Not a one. Mm-hmm. But yet on TikTok, that's not a flex if you truly knew npd it's not a flex 
to say your NPD? Oh, Doc, there's another guy that's cringy. He's a black guy. His name is Leon Walker. He has a YouTube and a tick. I blocked him because he was stalking me. I don't want that on my page. Don't stalk me, sir. But he has a huge, he's handsome, but his audience is women. And he says, you know, I, I'm a narcissist and I used to do these things until I changed my life around and I went to therapy. No, he's he loves the attention of the female audience. I can't I can't sit there and watch him for shit. It's cringy. It's so cringe. Like you're full of shit, sir. <laughs> yep. Full of shit telling women what they want to hear. This is why we do what we do. And I used to be like that. And no, you still are. You're still yes. a fucking manipulator. Mm-hmm. That's the thing is they're they're not NPD, but they're manipulative. Yeah. And they're egocentric. And again, I don't know any anyone that you've ever met that has introduced themselves as hi, I'm Custer B. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yet on TikTok, that's that's the flex. I worked with uh, uh and I don't even like to say over covert. Um, malignant and all that because we don't use those terms but that's what are used to describe these people so I Mm -hmm. worked with a malignant narcissist and oh my god he if you told him he was a narcissist he wouldn't oh he would go he would fly into a rage he was a psychologist he would fly into a rage he oh um, man but he was oh man you just check off the boxes and the gaslighting and all that and yet he was the head of the mental health at the prison. He was the wow. chief psychologist and would sit in meetings all the time and just freaking gaslight everybody. And mm-hmm. you have clinicians going, yep. that's so good. That's so I'm, I'm telling you all the real NPDs, they're posing as advocates. Like, oh, posing like Dr. Phil, like Dr. Phil, who I can't mm-hmm. fucking stand. Like he gaslights the shit of his Yes, I'm like, I, could, I hate him. I can't he's not stand even him. licensed in the state of California. He shouldn't be doing what he's doing. But yeah, he licensed. does. He makes people sign releases that they understand that he is not licensed and they can't sue him. He's yeah. manipulative Which, as hell. He's very manipulative oh, yeah. on his show. Yeah, Let he's not accountable for anything he does. If I have you sign a release basically resolving me of any harm that I might do to you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm not licensed. What we're doing here is not really, really therapy. So it's just advice, just advice. But well, he, yeah. what he does is therapy. What he does, is but therapy. it is true. Exactly what you said, Ashley. There's so many of them that are advocates, are coaches, are healers, are fishing for their their supply. Just. Mm-hmm just reeling it all in social media is the best place for cluster b histrionic histrionic the look at me look at me look at me Mm -hmm. social media is fantastic and reality tv oh yeah Yeah. (laughs) oh yeah and npd the supply is right there for everyone and how better a way to get supply than to say look i know what you're going through (laughs) <laughs> you know what I've even been there myself I've done it to people I've done it and this is why I did it so now I can tell you not to let anyone else do it to you except for me I'm still gonna do it to you as your supply right here mm-hmm. manipulation on next level mm-hmm. I can't I can't listen to it I can't and that's why we're so grateful for you and for other people on TikTok yeah. that are just real humans that are relatable, yeah. that just tell it how it is, that aren't trying to like get stuff from anybody. They're not looking for fame or clout or personal gain. They're just there yeah. to have community and um, have their voice heard. You know, that's that's why we love you. And- Thank you. And on just adding on to that, because I know a lot of these people like Lee Hammock, the one that you just uh, told me, Leon, whatever, the other guy, and I know a few more NPD cluster bees that have very big followings. Richard Grannon. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) huge followings. And I don't. 
So mine doesn't get around, but you do. And so I like that because you do, you can. And so, and Ashley as well are reaching a lot of people to say, this is like real life. This is not scripted. I am an NPD. Let me tell you, I'm self-aware. This is, these are what these fuckers do. That's right. Do this. And I, and I wish that social media didn't promote them as much as they do, but people are, it's funny. People are fascinated by them. But then again, think about when we first met our toxic person, we loved them too. We followed them too. And the pick me, the pick me women, the female narcs will always, they'll always support the self-aware male narcs so they're always going to have an audience of pick me women Mm. you know and like (laughs) i did a self-aware video a long time ago and i didn't mention any names but i got so many i got so much hate and a lot of people say Mm -hmm. he's helped me he has helped me how dare you and i said for one i didn't say anybody's name and two how did he help you are you still in your relationship yes but now i know Oh, okay. That's help. That's help. Now I know I'm being abused and I know that that's gaslighting. That's mind fucking. That's so I know. So I'm educated, but yes, the pick me's that stay the flying monkeys that will always do their bidding for whatever fucked up reason, they will always be there. And no matter yeah. what you do, what you say, the receipts can be there exponentially and they will refuse yeah to see them doc we could do a whole like um because i got an audience of women that have dated nothing but ex-convicts like doc Ugh. like these women need to know what the fuck goes down like dude is laid up with his girlfriend and he goes kisses his wife on the lips when she comes visit like women need to know what goes on in prison and like <laughs> we could do a we 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 could do a live off that by itself because it, women are gullible. Like, no, I dated an ex con one time. I'll never, and that's only because he was a childhood friend, and my brother grew up with him. And we we grew up in the same neighborhood. I do not fuck with with men from jail. No. <laughs> No. Heather, I was there about my ex. Yeah. <laughs> me, me and Ashley's yeah. exes We're all are ex cons. <laughs> Well, no. my, my, I mean, both Heather and my exes were incarcerated during the same time. They both got released last year. Oh, so you uh, know then. <laughs> my ex is in Puerto Rico, like a runaway fugitive wanted in several fucking states. And mine just got arrested on one of his warrants. <laughs> I know oh, that. Wow. So well. My ex was law enforcement, so my ex is on the other side. Which is even worse. The There's a fine line there, Joni. Fine line. In CDCR, the inmates were blue and the officers were green. And someone said to me after I had already left my ex, they're like, well, he's just an officer in, in the wrong uniform. He's just an office. He's just, sorry. He's just an inmate in green. That's all. And I'm like, why did you people not tell me that? beforehand they thought you knew yeah yeah, they did they did sadly because that's what people said to me we think we all know and we're like hello (laughs) like do you really think I would have stayed for 10 years if I knew but boy oh boy I saw I would tell my inmates so I'm like I'm not tell my inmates I would talk to my inmates about just because these these (laughs) these women think they're not they're in prison, so they're not going to be cheated on. Tough. Odds are, <laughs> if they've got a celly, they're already being cheated on. I hate to say yeah. that. I've been working in criminal justice for a decade. Well, I, I know exactly what goes on. I, I, my dad was friends with Suge Knight mm. when Suge Knight was in prison. Mm. Suge Knight would have his girlfriend come on one day and his wife come on the other day. Every weekend, never the two should meet. One was one day and the other was the other day. And it was a totally different demeanor between like a Saturday and a Sunday. And it was like, you know, whether they know or don't know, you can't be that stupid. Yeah. 
you just you just can't but I know so many women that are like but he's not gonna cheat on me oh how did he <laughs> yeah okay how did he <laughs> well I mean yeah we should have a whole fucking podcast on that because then then we can bust open the fact that why is it cheating when a man talks just talks to another woman when he's not incarcerated and all of a sudden it's him for lack of a better phrase getting his dick wet when he's in prison oh, like <laughs> i'm so no. like how do we pathologize this shit as women like yeah. just- well he's in survival mode in and out so He's got to get laid in there and he's got, he gets laid when he comes out. Mm-hmm. I will tell you, you guys probably don't want to hear this. So I'm sorry. Trevor, I want to hear it. Uh, I do. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Not the best. It's kind yeah. of very, very, you're going to want to shower after this, but there were two inmates that I knew of that the visiting, they would have conjugal visits or family visits. So if you're married, you get a weekend visit or your family can come for the weekend. And there were two inmates that the visiting guys would tell me whenever it was their time, it was the moms would come with lingerie, sexy stuff. And one time one of the moms was like, well, you know, somebody's, it's my son and he's in a male prison. So somebody's got to. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Two no, I, I was told that about two no. separate. In- I, no. believe oh. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And yes. I was just like, "Oh Lord, I love my son so much, but I draw the line because you love your son. You wouldn't. That's <laughs> you wouldn't. That's Sorry. the Jacosta Oedipus complex, right? When the mother is um like sexually attracted to her son. What do they call that? Jocasta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was, oh my God. Cause the day after the weekend visit, the, the officer was telling me about the stuff that was in the, the, the weekend bag of the moms. Mm, and it was mm, all this mm. little sexy little G strings and stuff. Mm, and it's mm, like, mm. I believe it. I totally believe it. Like, I do. I know that my son, I had a natural birth, but that's the only time I really want him to know what that looks like, right? Wow, Jody. (laughs) (laughs) But it's true. It's like, I don't want my son to know what that's like. He was birthed through my birth canal. That's the We're good. We're (laughs) good. We're good. Good story. Good story, Jody. (laughs) One to the next. Jesus Christ. And on that note. (laughs) <laughs> okay yes on that note, i told you guys you'd want to you want to shower <laughs> i definitely <laughs> i need my i'm gonna take a toothbrush to my brain <laughs> <laughs> that's not a visual i ever want no but doc there's there i follow some inmates on tiktok just to listen to the stories and there was one guy he's full gay and he 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 was talking about how he first got he you know he first got into prison, and it was a straight guy that was marking his territory. The guy is married with a wife and kids. Soon as he walk in, you're mine. And he's like, wait a minute, he you know I can understand he was gay being aggressive, but you're a straight man being fucking aggressive. And he said he got out of prison. Well, he stayed in prison, and the guy got out, went home to his wife, came back to visit, and put money on his books, like. I was blown away. So, and the guy ended up having, he committed crime just to come back to jail because he likes men. A lot of them will come back and return and return because yes. they, they like, they like, they like fucking men. That is very and they, true. They, they get out and they fucking abuse the women because they're institutionalized. And they're yes. not going to get help for their problems. They bully and punish women. They want to be yeah. with a man. I feel like that's one of the my things, ex, honest to God, I feel my, like my yeah. ex is closeted Uh-oh. and institutionalized and hates women. Doc and could do a whole live on this, man. I'm telling just, you. Yeah, it just goes back to prison all the time after abusing more women so that he could be with men. I'm gay. Sure they call it, it what gay for the stay. That's what they call it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you I'm know, you. also in here's the thing in prison, sex is not. Sex is used for power. Just like rape is not a sexual thing. It's a power and control thing. Yes. So a lot of gangs, 
what they will do is there's the shot caller and then there's the the hierarchy of gangs and you either have to because a, a correctional counselor was telling me this their motto is basically blood on my knife or shit on my dick oh. either way you have to pay so you either have to harm someone or i will i will sodomize you oh my and god it's not about because i'm gay and i want to it's about because what is the worst thing you could do to hum humiliate a man a straight man and show power and control like and the break them you do it to women mm -hmm. so they do it to men so that is something wow. so then also when but but that also shows you how they're going to treat women too yes because they're using sex as a means of control that tells should tell everybody that rape is not a sexual act it is a means of control yes and rage yeah. and anger and all of that so we have all these different things for another podcast and another <laughs> podcast and another podcast. Yeah, doc, because, because when, when I, my ex got out of prison after 20 years, he ended up raping me within our relationship. And we don't talk about that either. And I didn't realize that's something he, he learned in prison and it was a power yeah. thing. Yep. It's and you can be raped I in mean, your relationship. Yeah. That's the way of your certain control. Yeah. Power and dominance. And it has, absolutely nothing to do with romance and intimacy and any of that hmm. my ex used to do that and he would he would say he was punishing me yeah like he'd say you're in trouble yeah a lot of we don't talk about that we don't talk about sexual assault and being raped and within the confines of the relationship because they think that they own us hmm. And so many people would say, how can you be raped if you're married to someone? How can you be raped in a relationship? <laughs> but it is yes. the total lack of taking away the intimacy, the romance, this very special, supposed to be connection and turning it into, like you said, punishment, power, control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my ex would withhold sex. He would tell me about how, oh, my ex was so crazy. And when she got mad, she'd withhold sex for me to punish me. And what did he do to me? Withhold sex to punish me. Like, so who did what to whom? I don't think that was your ex. I think that was. Sound like he was projecting what he did to yeah. her. Yeah. 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 But crazy. So the same playbook, they all operate the same way. There is Crazy. a big blue book of cluster B. <laughs> yeah. It's like the big blue book of alcoholism that they use in AA. There's a big blue book of cluster B with a section on NPD, a section on APD, BPD, ASPD, BPD, and HPD. And they all know it. It's like they're, it's given to them at birth or something. Yeah. <laughs> Memorized it by the time they become adults. Sad. Doc, Doc, what do you think about the whole dark triad thing? Someone asked me that the other day. Yeah. And Heather, maybe you feel the same way because Machiavellianism or whatever isn't mm -hmm. really a, a term, a, a psychological term. To right. Me, it sounds more like sociopathic narcissist, which yeah. would be ASPD. What mm -hmm. about you, Heather? So, yeah, someone with ASPD and NPD would be what's considered a sociopathic narcissist, which is probably one of the most dangerous kinds, but I agree. Think, Heather. Yeah. I mean, isn't the dark triad just a combination of different character defects within ASPD and, and NPD? Well, they don't mention ASPD. They say Machiavellian. It is just like, like being like a malignant predator type, right? Like that's like and manipulative. That's what Machiavelli is. A psychopath, Machiavellian, and narcissist. Narcissist. So I think yeah. it's like a, it's just like a combination of those three, and I think Machiavellianism just like combines a little bit of like NPD and ASPD and. Which is really a sociopath. That's what it sounds to me. Yeah. Sociopath. It's just Machiavellian. It's just how we describe very dangerous predators. Yeah. But yeah. Machiavellianism, narcissism, and psychopathy. But yeah. psychopathy would be narcissism and mm -hmm. Machiavellian. So it's it's kind of like a, a just a name for I think what a lot of people would call a sociopathic narcissist. Yes. With I agree. And NPD. 
Yeah. So what's interesting about it is that if you look at on Google, Wikipedia says it's narcissism. So, so it's ASPD and borderline. And then on psychology today, it says that it's the Machiavellianism, psychopathy and narcissism. So see, it's not even truly agreed upon what it is. It is. Right. Here's the thing. And I think we're going to have to wrap it up in a minute. So I want to kind of end okay. on this. Toxic is toxic is toxic, regardless of what they are or what they're diagnosed with or not diagnosed with. Toxic is toxic is toxic. But nowadays we want to put labels on it as to which is more toxic than the other. So which is worse? And so there's the dark triad, <laughs> which sounds really bad but they're just as fucked up. We call it. And now I, I did it in a, in a case conference. We coined this term, which other people probably have to, but we've coined this term. And now Heather and Ashley and I use it. Someone who's got a lot of cluster B traits or all the cluster B traits are just a giant cluster fuck. Mm -hmm. They're cluster F. <laughs> I like cluster F much better than dark triad. I do too. They're just a cluster, cluster. fuck. You're a clusterfuck. A clusterfuck <laughs> of toxic <laughs> bullshit. Mm -hmm. Stay the fuck away from them. They're dangerous as fuck. It doesn't fucking matter what they have. Just run for your fucking life. <laughs> Hard stop, <laughs> point yeah. blank, period, end of story. Clusterfucks are not okay. Get them out. Get them out of your life. Mm -hmm. So. On that note, thank you so much for taking your time yes. after the 48 hours you had and sharing your story. And we will absolutely do this again because we have a bunch of content to now talk about. Yes, we right. do. <laughs> um, Anytime. Sure, I love to come back. This was great. I did. Next time I'll have my wine glass and I'll be dolled up. I'm just beat. I'm going to go to sleep after this because I am and tired. Yes, because she's also yeah. three hours ahead of me, two hours yeah. ahead of them. <laughs> so it's pretty late. So again, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, thank ladies. You. Any